everyone, welcome to another TIFF 2019 interview. This is for the upcoming movie, Harriet. I am so excited to talk to the team behind the movie about this one. So many places that I want to start, but Cynthia, I have to go to you first. So obviously playing Harriet Tubman is an immense challenge, but if you had to isolate one very specific thing about the role that was the most intimidating thing to you, what would it be? I think I can I can isolate to a moment, and that was when I had to climb up the side of a little cliff, was it a cliff? Mm -hmm. Climbing up the side of a cliff, that was intimidating. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because it was really me doing it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that was intimidating. It's, I think the physical aspect of, uh, of, of her, I'm, I'm trying to make sure that even through all of that physical activity that she still remained feminine, you know, mm -hmm. that she still had femininity about her. Because it's not that it was all second nature to her, even though it was within her. That, that there's still like the work behind it. You have to work to get to that, yeah. That's like one of the beautiful things about the movie, yeah. a, a woman being strong and leading yeah. the charge yeah. and finding herself and yeah. helping others through that process. So yeah. I definitely think you achieved that. Thank you. So I know you were attached to this project for many years and yes. we were talking about Bad Times, which was one yes. of my favorite movies of last year. Yes. You've had a lot happen since you were first attached to this. Yeah. And I imagine that might kind of rock the boat a little. Maybe something came up that made you think, oh no, maybe I can't do Harriet. Right. So were there ever any of those periods and what made you stick with this project? Um, uh, I don't. I, I think in my mind, I was always going to be doing this. I, I don't think I was certain that the one thing that needed to happen was this. So I, I had to make sure that things would move around it. There were things that might Im impinge on it, but I was like, we have to make it work. Figure it out, and we'll we'll get to it. You know, um, because I knew that this was a specifically special project that I wanted to be a part of. Yeah, definitely yeah, is. Yeah. And Casey, I'm curious, you've worked with Cynthia. I think you're working with Octavia Spencer right now. I can just go down the list of wonderful leading ladies that you've worked with. So do you notice a shared trait among all the greats? Uh, just being great. Yeah. <laughs> greatness. <laughs> That's what I notice. Yeah. Uh, and I feel incredibly uh, lucky, like on a talent high, to, to have worked with the people I've worked with, but working with Cynthia is such a, um, it was a really transformative experience for me because we were bringing somebody so important to me to life and just to watch her emerge through Cynthia, you know, it was, it was such a gift. It was a really deep, I, I don't know, it's one of those experiences that you have and you think, is, every, is it ever going to be this good again? You know what I mean? Is it ever going to be this important? Is it ever going to be this meaningful? Is it ever going to, am I ever going to feel this close to somebody who lived? Because I really, I felt very close to Harriet. You know, it was a very pure experience for me. That's so, so beautiful. And Leslie, you've had experience playing historical characters before. First, what is, what are the pillars of William Still that you needed to bring to screen the best possible way? What were the ones that you were most nervous about getting on point? Um, <clears throat> well, whenever you're not the, you know, number one on the call sheet, you, you know, really you're trying to arrive on the set and like you know um sort of drop into the culture of what's been created before you got there you know i mean i i, I wasn't there for the first couple weeks and so by the time you get there there's already a rhythm and there's something happening and so you're getting there and you're trying to like just be super sensitive and 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 um you know assimilate into that culture as quickly as possible um so you don't uh rock the boat unless you're intended to rock the boat mm -hmm. which in a way <laughs> which is a little bit which is a little bit of what it was great yeah which is a little bit of what william you know what they did for each other with what william did for harriet and what harriet did for william is that they did they 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 came from very very different um perspectives you know ends of the ends of the spectrum uh you know kind of trying to achieve the same thing but uh from very different ends of the spectrum so uh yeah like uh yeah we hope that some of that that alchemy like that's where their sparks came from on screen we hope do you have any advice for anybody out there who might jump into a role like this where they're playing such a key historical figure given your experience oh yeah i mean uh you know you just you do the research um and then you try to find the little pathways in yourself, those little pathways to empathy, those little pathways to like, where are we the same? What do I, what do, what, what are the things that I understand about this person right away? And then also, you know, that curiosity of, you know, that's an interesting decision that he made or she made. I wonder why they did that or how you get there. But I think you first start with 
I first start with all the ways that we're alike. Here are all the things that I understand right away. I want to go back to something you said before about being a member of, of the ensemble and stepping in and not not rocking the boat. And forgive me if this question is convoluted. We're still working on it. But I love this idea of being a lead in an ensemble. And I know that the, the director is at the helm, but you in the title role, what does that mean to you as far as being a leader in the ensemble? How do you kind of set that tone appropriately for everybody? It, it, it means a lot. I, I, take, I take it very seriously. I, I do believe that if you're if you're in the number one um, position that your job is not just to play the lead role your job is to uh, facilitate everyone else on the set trying to make sure that everyone else is comfortable lead by example so you know making sure that I'm prepared making sure that I'm ready to work making sure that I, I'm watching out for everyone else making sure that I can be a voice for those who maybe are too afraid to ask for something or too afraid to speak about something that's that's where I see myself um, ch you know me my mood can change the mood completely. So uh, m my responsibility is also to be aware of that, you know, when, when you're on set. And she does so, it yeah. better than almost anyone I've ever seen. She's extraordinary at it. Yeah. It's a big job. Yeah. That's one of my favorite answers I've gotten to that <laughs> question. That was beautiful. <laughs> Casey, one specific thing in the story I really wanted to ask you about developing is representing Harriet's narcolepsy. That was just one of the things that really struck me. One, because I wasn't super familiar with that, but also that's where your style as a director really shines through. So can you tell me about the process of developing that and putting it in the story? Well, it's interesting because as I did, uh, I did seven months of pure research on Harriet and very quickly, um, you realize that this is this is this is a huge part of her story, mm -hmm. and so um, in in looking at the script and, and thinking about the script, I thought this is how we're going to meet her. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> she's un she's unconscious mm -hmm. in a field, yeah. Yeah. you know, and um, and that's that's the beginning. That's our introduction to her character, mm -hmm. and it's um, it's a huge part of of her life, and that she accomplished this as a woman in this period, a petite woman, an uneducated woman, a, a, a former enslaved person um, with narcolepsy, really? You know, with epileptic seizures? Mm -hmm. She managed to not only escape, but then go back? How do you have the fortitude and the courage to, to, to go back for other people when at any time, out of your control, you might have a seizure? Right. I know this is there's probably no easy answer to this, but it just astounds me that we've never had a movie about her before. So why do you think that is? I don't know. And you know, maybe maybe the world is waiting for the right time for it to happen. Mm -hmm. um, though we wish it could happen earlier, maybe now it is r the right time for, for it to, to, to happen. Maybe now people are ready to see her, yeah. you know? Um, she's been waiting. And uh, she's waited long enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely yeah. right. I love hearing about uh, happy magic on set, something that comes out of a scene that you might not have expected, whether it's because, <laughs> I don't know, like a production so issue happened or anything for that you matter. Can oh you oh can boy. take this one. You can take this one. This one, you okay. got something. I know the one we're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah you know. we're both thinking about the same um, one, and you, you can take it. Cause okay, so, well, um, you've seen the movie, but yeah. uh, there's a certain point where Harriet uh, crosses the border into freedom. And this was obviously a very huge moment for, for me. And I planned it out as the director does. And you know, you scout a location and you say, this is where she's gonna do it. Um, but when we came to work that day, it was pouring rain, really, really, really pouring rain. Yeah. Yeah. And it, um, it rained pretty steadily yeah. all day long. And, and um, it was getting late and we had <laughs> Cynthia so four changes. Yeah. And it was just yeah. septic. <laughs> and and uh, just, there was a lot going on that day. And it, the mood got very, very pessimistic. Yeah. And um, to the point where it's like, you're not gonna get the scene. Yeah. And I'm like, well, we have to get the scene. It's our, it's our last day here, all these yeah. production things that come up. And, um, and I'm like, no, we're gonna go up to the top of that hill and we're gonna get the scene. Mm -hmm. And so I called the makeup artist and the hairdresser. I'm like, you <laughs> please, get just please. move her through, please. You just gotta do this. And, and um, when you're directing, you know things that some people know, but you know, it, it's hard to communicate the urgency of, you know, I need, I need it. It's, it's daylight, you know, it's light that we're talking about. It, we might not get anyway. So we march through the mud to the top of this hill and the sky is black and everybody's looking at me like, are you crazy? Like, what, how is this going to work? And I'm, I'm looking at this little line of blue, you know, at the horizon and like just gets in the air <laughs> and we start building the crane. Yeah. 
And um, the second the crane was built, Cynthia arrived. And this is your gift. It's just being in the moment. Yeah. You know, being yeah. able to be available in the moment and just to be Harriet in that yeah. moment. Can I tell you, I mean, the skies parted. I mean, it's amazing. Madness. It was madness. The most magical sunset you could possibly imagine. Double rainbows Double behind rainbows. us. Yeah. As it, everybody. It was crazy. It was, like the sky was like this ridiculous blue and with like streaks of red and orange. The sun was huge and glaring. And then there was, there was a double rainbow just behind us. Unbelievable. And Harriet walks into freedom and we are like. As we walk into <laughs> It was just incredible. It was the most incredible Ridiculous. Moment. Everybody applauded and uh, it was Burst just one of those tears days where everybody was like, cranky and yeah. all of a sudden it was like Harriet was there. I mean, yeah. we felt it all the time. We felt yeah. like Harriet was there. And, yeah. You know, yeah. Harriet was going to make sure that her walk into but freedom was gorgeous. that moment was like, oh, you really, <laughs> you've really been here, haven't you? You've been watching this. You've been waiting for this second, haven't you? Yeah. That's it what it was one of like. my favorite. That was the first time in the film where it's like, you know, the tears yeah. are welling up. But that was the first time where I'm like, uh-oh, that's all over yeah. now. And yeah. I sat in a puddle that after that. That was real. We kept saying, no one is going, no one's going to believe that this isn't CGI. No one's going to believe that this is real. But that is real. That's how it, that's what it, what you saw is what we saw. Yep. That's what we saw. Clouds parted. That. Yeah. And that's what Matt. happened. Before I have to wrap up with you guys, I want to play a Collider game with you. And at this festival, we are doing Collider Most Memorable. So I've got a list of, I think, six or seven topics. And I want you to tell me the first thing that comes to your mind. So first off, most memorable film premiere, whether it's one for one of your movies or one you attended. Most memorable film premiere. Um, I'm going to say Bad Times at the El Royale. Good choice. Yeah. Eats by you right here for yeah. me. Yeah. Oh, well, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 I've been to like two or three, I, I don't know, D Harriet, yeah. Yeah. Tuesday, coming <laughs> Tuesday coming up. Tuesday coming up. I like the sound of that. All right, this is a silly one. Most memorable meal. Okay, so at Christmas time, my mom makes the most amazing like salmon. Mm. And I don't eat fish, but when she cooks it, I will. Mm. <laughs> um, she made the most brilliant meal and she, uh, it was the first, uh, it's probably the first time I managed to get back to London for Christmas. This was like last year. And she made like a whole Christmas dinner and brought it to the hotel that we were staying in. And we managed to like That's get the, the private room to have her, my sister, myself, my other half. We all had breakfast, my best friend was there. And, like it was amazing. She made the most amazing meal. That was a good meal. Yeah, how about for you too? Uh, for me, it's Lisbon, Portugal. I was 17 and I had paella for the first time. Oh, and, um, and I thought it was the food of the gods. I was like, this is the most amazing thing I've ever eaten in my life. That's kind of divine. Mm -hmm. Gosh. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I might have another one for you Cynthia, as well. Cynthia, take it. Okay. Um, Paris, I think it was 2011, I want to say. I took myself to Paris by myself. I was there for a week. I found a little restaurant. Uh, I was on my own and I sat uh, outside and there's a park opposite me and I'm watching the park and uh, I ordered like, and I didn't really drink very much, but I was in Paris and I was like, I'm going to have a small glass of dessert wine. And I had like, when I was eating meat, uh, like a meal of duck uh, confit. Mm -hmm. And it was... Amazing, and I spent like two hours just sitting watching people go by. That sounds so nice. It's like, right like now. something out of a freaking movie. It's amazing. Mm. It was awesome. You got anything? I have to go still. <laughs> yeah. Goodness, I thought either, Cynthia was either that, or if you could only eat one food for the rest of your life, mm -mm. what would it be? Yeah, um, mine would be. Can I? It's. It's. A, can I have a a certain meal? Oh, or you know, yeah. A meal. You can get away with that. Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving dinner every day for the rest of my life. I want the turkey. I want the mac and cheese. I want the stuffing. I want the cranberry mm. sauce. I want the mashed potatoes, the yams. I want it all. <laughs> Solid every choice day. right there. <laughs> what is, this is a big one now, what is the most memorable scene you've ever shot? If not the one you guys just I told mean, me about. That's pretty, okay, so one of my favorites is, uh, well, two. So one of my favorites uh, is when John and I um, uh, f filmed, the, it's like our breakup. Basically, it's when she realizes that he's with another woman, and I just remember it being heartbreaking. But but it felt so good uh, and cathartic to do. Um, so I, that was amazing. I did that with Zach Momo, and with this one here, it's when it's the first time she um, is asked uh, what name she wants to go by, and she that's when she chooses Harriet Tubman. I just remember thinking, what a moment to be able to like speak her name that way, like 
give her the agency to like say it out loud again. Yeah. I love those choices. Yeah. Yeah, it gives me chills. Yeah. That moment. Yeah. Same one. Uh, it, it's Harry <laughs> Swackford. I mean, that oh, was yeah. that was one of the yeah. most incredible things that's ever happened in my life. Yeah. I mean, it was it was it was true. It was magic. Yeah. It was you felt the press. Even the crankiest, most cynical crew person Couldn't. was like, that was hairy. I mean, the yeah. people burst into tears spontaneously. Yeah, it, was it, was, it was amazing. It was amazing. I see the thinky face on. Say it again? I said I see the thinky face on again. The um, face. Well, I did. <laughs> we ended up with Thanksgiving dinner last time, so it works. Good. I, um, I have a two-year-old, so I'm tired all the time. So, like, my brain doesn't work as fast. But I just did, um, I did the... The Sopranos movie, it's called mm, Newark, mm. and it comes out, and that was, you know, another great ensemble, and it was probably, um, you know, one of those ensemble scenes from that, you know, we did this one scene where, like, kind of all the guys were together, and, you know, Alessandro's there, you know, Ray Liotta's there, and, you know, Billy Magnuson, you know, where and, and kind of everybody had a little thing to do, so, you know, it was like... It was like, you know, just passing the ball. You know what like I mean? Like, you just like that. Yeah, 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 yeah that yeah, little yeah, dance yeah. between yeah. like yeah. 11, 12 people. Yeah. Yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? And when it's right, it's just yeah. right. And what is and that? Fuck it. Yeah. Yeah, that yeah, was, yeah, yeah. That was pretty memorable. Oh, I yeah. can't wait that's, for that. That's cool. That seems really cool. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. I'm going to end on one more big one for you uh-huh. guys. Most memorable fear overcome. Most memorable fear overcome. Walking into uh, uh, waters in the middle of the night. Uh, not being able really to see the bottom of it. Like, just like, all right, this is going to work. We're going to do this. Yeah, that was a little bit of a fear. Yeah. Doing a movie on Harriet Tubman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Understandable. <laughs> yeah. You did it. We did it. You did it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'll take a left. Again, I, um, like, I just, uh, I, I've been talking about this we were just talking about earlier about this i I was telling casey i feel like you know she must have felt you know really being at the helm of this big creative thing and i just finished my my first original album you know of music and um that was super scary you know and i I started telling people i was going to do it before i'd written one song (laughs) you know so uh, my next album is going to be all originals um so yeah just like finding my voice in that way yeah, finding yeah, my voice yeah. in that way is, oh, that. thank wait, you guys man. so much this was such a pleasure again a huge congratulations on this movie I hope you have a wonderful time thank you, and thank, you. thank you so to much to everybody out there thank you so much for watching this interview before we say goodbye we have to give a big thank you to our sponsors it's Nordstrom Canada thank you so much for making these interviews happen do not leave this video without liking and sharing it and tune back in soon for more TIFF interviews <laughs>